Okay, number 192 tells us that the ratio by volume of soap to water, no, soap to alcohol to water, so soap, alcohol, and water is 2 to 50 to 100. And the solution will be altered so that the ratio of soap to alcohol is doubled. So soap to alcohol is going to be doubled. So instead of 2 over 50, it's going to be 2 over 25. And the ratio of soap to water is halved. So soap to water is going to be cut in half. So that's going to be 2 over 200 which is equal to 1 over 100. All right. If the altered solution will contain 100 cubic centimeters of alcohol, then how many cubic centimeters of water will it contain? OK, so the way that we'll solve this is we will plug in this 100 cubic centimeters here. So if the ratio is 2 to 25, then that's, um, and the 25 is 100, that's a difference of four times, right? So that means in terms of the ratios, there's going to be 8 cubic centimeters of soap. So now we take this 8 and we plug it into this ratio to figure out water. So if we know the 1 is supposed to be an 8, then the water must be 800. And that is going to be our answer. 800 is E. 193 says, if 75% of a class answered the first question on a certain test correctly, 55% answered the second test on the test, second question on the test correctly, and 20% answered neither of the questions correctly, what percent answered both correctly? While this is a question about tests, this is actually a... Um, uh, an overlapping sets problem where we will, we can actually use the double set matrix to figure this out. But the way that we're going to set up this matrix is we're going to look at each individual question. So the people who got Q1 right and the people who got Q1 wrong and how that overlaps with people who got Q2 right and Q2 wrong. And of course the totals as usual. Now this question deals with percentages and whenever we deal with percentages we know that the total is going to be a hundred percent. So we put that in the bottom right box here. And now we go back to the question and it says that 75 percent of the class answered the first question correctly. So that's 75 here. That means 25% answered it incorrectly. We also know that 55% answered the second correct too. And that means 45% answered question two incorrectly. Okay, if 20% answered neither correctly, so 20% got both of the questions wrong, then what percent answered both correctly? Well, we subtract this and we get a five here we subtract the 5 from the 55, and we get a 50. That was easy. 50% is going to be answer D. 194 will require me to do a quick drawing. That looks like that. 2, 3, 4. And then there is a line, like so. They say that this is y equals x, and then there is 1, 2, 3, and then there's a dot here, and they call this a. Now, with this question, what they say is, uh, they say in the rectangular coordinate system above, the line y equals x is the perpendicular bisector of segment ab, but they don't show us what b is, and the x-axis which, uh, you know, just to, to remind everybody, the x-axis is this. The x-axis is the perpendicular bisector of segment BC, which is not shown. So there's a B somewhere and there's a C somewhere, but not shown. We just have to imagine they're here somewhere. If the coordinates of A are 2, 3, then what are the coordinates of point C? 
Okay, so we are going to have to just look at the answer choices and see which ones aren't going to make sense right off the bat. So A is negative 3 and negative 2. We have negative 3 and 2. 2 and negative 3. We have 3 and negative 2. And we have 2 and 3. So which one of these don't make sense? Well, right off the bat, we, if we just look at the way that the, you know, the first two, A and B, negative 3, negative 3, I mean, negative 3 would be all the way out here. And there's no way that, uh, you know, what we're looking for here, there's no way that C is going to be all the way back there. So A and B right off the bat, we know that's absolutely not going to be true. So even if you didn't know the answer, you could at least eliminate A and B and have a much better shot at guessing at the right answer. Now, let's look at C, D, and E. They tell us that B is a perpendicular is being bisected by y equals x, right? So that means the slope of B has to be the exact uh, opposite of whatever y equals x is. So if y equals x is, is this line here, then B must be either uh, is probably going to be either this point or this point or some other point. It, you know, the line is going to look like this. Right, so B might be this, might be this, whatever the case may be. Now, if X bisects BC, that means C has to be down here somewhere. And then BC would be a line that looks something like this. You know, it could be anything like, any of these could be C. So what we're going to be looking for is a coordinate that is uh, positive for X and negative for Y. It's going to be somewhere, somewhere down here. So what that means is it's not E either. So it's going to be either C or D. Now, we know that A is, uh, is 2 comma 3. So if A you know, has a, it is 2 comma 3, then it can't be C because C, if C was 2 comma negative 3 all the way down here, there's no way that x would be the perpendicular bisector of bc, right? Because it, in order for it to be a perpendicular bisector, it would have to be uh, a vertical line. So we can eliminate c. So all that's left is d, and d is 3 comma negative 2, which is 2, 3, 1, 2, which is right here. And that is right in line with our prediction of where c would be. And so uh, D is going to be our correct answer. 195 says a store currently charges the same price for each towel that it sells. If the current price of each towel were to be increased by a dollar, 10 fewer of the towels could be bought for 120, um, uh, excluding sales tax. What is the current price of each towel? So we know that the sales previously was 120 and that they sold a certain amount of towels, which I'll use T. T equals number of towels and uh, price. I'll use P. P equals price. TP was $120. Now they're saying that if the current price were to be increased by a dollar, so P plus 1 were multiplied by whatever the number of towels are, there would be ten, okay, so there would be ten fewer towels. So T minus ten times P plus one would be one hundred and twenty. They're saying that they would still sell for the same amount of money, but um, they would sell ten fewer towels. So they would break even. Okay. So what we can do here is actually solve this. And then look for, what are we looking for? We're looking for the current price of the towel, so P. That's going to be what we're looking for. So let's figure this out. T times P is TP minus 10P plus T um, minus 10. What do you know? TP is 120. So 120 equals 120 minus 10P plus T minus 10. Those two cancel out. We get 0 equals negative 10p plus t minus 10. Okay, let's look at this relationship again. Let's get rid of the t since we're solving for p. 
we know that t is going to be 120 over p. So let's plug that in. And we get negative 10p uh, plus 120 over p minus 10. Now let's uh, multiply everything by p so that we can get rid of the fraction. What we end up with is negative uh, 10p squared plus 120p minus, uh, what do we get? Minus, no, we wouldn't have a p here. So they would cancel out, minus 10p. So now let's get rid of the, well, you know what? Let's reorganize this real quickly. It's going to look like this. And now let's factor out the 10. You know, I'm going to factor out a negative 10. And we'll get p squared plus p minus 100, or, or minus 12. Um, and let's set it to e equal to 0. But you know what? Let's um, factor this out first. So p plus 4, p minus 3 plus 10. Um, p is going to be equal to negative 4 or positive 3. And going back to this original equation, we know that the price, p stands for a price, so p can't be a negative price. You can't, you're not going to pay people to take your towels. So 3 is going to be the correct answer. And 3 is answer C. Okay, we are on to number 1 uh, 196. 196 says, oh, it's a chart. So they have a jar, P, Q, and R. And then they have red marbles, they have green, and they have total. And they tell you that that's X, Y, Y, Z, and X, Z. And that the totals are 80, 120, and 160. It says in the table above, what is the number of green marbles in jar R? What is the total number of green? So basically, what is Z? That's what they're looking for. Okay, what can we do here? Okay, we can create three equations. We can have x plus y equals 80, and we have y plus z equals 120, and x plus z equals 160. First, let's solve for z and set the x and the y to each other. So we have z equals 120 minus y, z equals 160 minus x. We set them equal to each other, and what we're left with is x minus y equals, uh, what is that equal? x minus y equals, oop, where's my cursor? Well. Lost my train of uh, thought there. Okay, so x minus y equals 40. Now what we do is we take that and we take the first equation and we add them to get 2x equals 120 because the y's cancel out. And x equals 60. We plug that back into this equation and we get 60 plus z equals 160, z equals 100. And z equals 100 is going to be answer D. All right. I think I'm out of time, so check out the next video.